Hi, yeah, it's Jackie here from the LGFA, and we're on a call today looking ahead to some key club championship fixtures uh, around the country and also looking back um, on last weekend's activity. So I'm going to introduce my three guests. Uh, top left-hand side of my screen as I look is Aoife Gorman, captain of Wicklow side Tinnahili, who are safely through to a Leinster Senior Club final. Jerry Hickey, Joint Manager of Glencar Manor Hamilton, the Connacht semi-finalist is on the bottom left-hand side of my screen and former uh, Monaghan Manager Niall Trainer, who is now the Ulster Fixture Secretary doing all of that logistical stuff uh, is on the bottom right. Folks, how are we doing? Good, good, good. Nice. Uh, thanks for coming on today, folks. Really appreciate your time. Aoife, I'm going to kick off with you because obviously... Um, uh, standout results, I think. One of the standout results of last weekend was uh, Tina Healy from Wicklow went up against Eadstown from Kildare. We had Grace Clifford from Eadstown looking ahead to that game, but it was Tina Healy who came through. So uh, what were your reflections on that one? Um, oh, sure. We're delighted with the win. You know, we at half time we were down seven points and we managed to win the game by five points. So a 12 point turnaround, like it was impressive. Um and yeah, we're just delighted. I think our subs who came on really gave us a good boost and we brought over the line. So can I ask the the old well-worn cliche, what was said at half time? <laughs> uh, like at half time, you know, we've been in many uh, Leinster games now, sure we're eight in a row county champions. So we've been in Leinster a lot now and we kind of said to ourselves, like, you know, it was now or never. We kind of had to give ourselves a pick up and say like you know we needed to play we knew ourselves we hadn't played uh well at all in the first half um there was nothing to blame only ourselves like the weather was was perfect and um we just we were making silly mistakes like like pass, passing us straight to the other team there was like loads and then we had um lucy to come on at half time yes and that gave us a boost so but she certainly made an impact yeah, she scored five points, I think it was, so definitely an impact, yeah. And Lucy Mulhall, of course. Um, and Aoife, what's been the, the reaction locally now to, to get into a Leinster, a Leinster final? Um, yeah, everyone, I think, is just, you know, like everyone believed in us, to be fair. We've been, like last year, we were very unlucky not to be in the Leinster final. Yes. Um, so you know went to extra time and we were unlucky at the end and then they went on Dunboy went on to win the Leinster final so we were very unlucky last year and I think that kind of you know gave us the momentum this year to really go for it so the whole town's behind us now so was that mentioned at all at, ha at half time if or before no, the run up to no, the game Dunboy that you know it's now or never as you say we, we, yeah. we've got to pull this one off I think it was in the back of all our minds like the heartbreak from last year so it wasn't really mentioned at half time, but it was just kind of now and ever. Like we all know where we stand, you know. So, yeah. Okay, we'll have a chat about Croaks in a little while. You can take a breath for a couple of minutes. <laughs> if we'll go down to, to we'll go down to Jerry Hickey, um, uh, Jerry. So three in a row in Leitrim, and I watched a wee video of your good self. Um, so you stepped into the into the hot seat, so to speak, um, after last year's campaign. So how have you found the journey so far? Oh, yeah, Jackie. It's it was new to me um been involved with the ladies i've never managed a couple of underage uh, lad teams within the club but uh it was big steps or big shoes to, to fill this year going in there for uh, our local man park Hargan stepped down last year so um and rain and county champions with plenty of talent within, within the squad you know so but in fairness the the joint manager there james fancy has been involved with uh teams gone by and you know has led me on a great path in fairness to him it wasn't a simple um county final leader you had to graft it out yeah look at um nearly most games in the leitrim county championship have been very competitive and back down to the wire again in in the county final against Ballamore and any previous games that we've played them it's always been a battle with them but uh thank god we came out and tapped uh, um, Aoife has referenced the fact you know eight in a row champions and now going into the province territory that they're familiar with I mean the province is not unfamiliar territory for for Glencar Manor Hamilton either Jerry. but ha as a management team how do you manage the reset and bringing them back down from the high of winning a county title and trying to get them back up again now for a provincial series well, I suppose uh, the big thing within our own club uh, the girls won their 
first senior championship and then went on to, to win a Connacht Intermediate. Uh, unfortunately, due to COVID times, they didn't get to push on into an That's All-Ireland right. Series. And then bounced back last year again, uh, won the county championship and pushed on at another level within Connacht, entering the senior grade and got to a Connacht final and lost out to, you know, the, the end in All-Ireland champions. So I suppose the girls have set goals for themselves and it's hopefully to get back there again and maybe push on. But like with, with myself and James coming in this year, we couldn't really look beyond that because there's new girls after coming into the team. There's girls that have dropped away from the team, but uh, like it was game by game and that's all we've been preaching all year. So we've left ourselves in a good position now after a dog fight last weekend against St. Nathie's. Opposite to, to the conditions that Aoife was playing in last weekend, we had thunderstorm conditions over in Sligo. So, um, but look, at, we've rounded out with, with a point win and now looking forward to uh, playing Borough Shrule, the Mayo champions. Yeah, I mean, that. that was a serious victory for you because obviously St. Nathie's have good recent tradition and heritage as well, um, Jerry. So how much confidence does that infuse into a camp when you come out of a battle like that with a single point that must give you a huge a huge boost oh, a huge lift of course like when, when you're down to the wire and there's questions asked of you you know like you have to be happy and like them girls can be proud of themselves like we, we were a goal down at half time and you know not playing well our backs against the wall and uh we came out with a good fighting spurt in the second half and, and, and ground out a result. And it went right down to the fourth minute of, at a time, you know. So, you know, like that'll instill confidence in the girls. And hopefully we can bring forward, uh, you know, again for, for Monday coming. Good stuff. We'll, we, we'll chat about that in a little while. Uh, Jerry, you can draw breaths as well. We'll go over to Niall. How are things, Niall? What's the bad at all, Jackie? Not so bad. Good, good. We haven't chatted for a little while. We're over and back on some WhatsApps and texts from time to time. All right. So it's good to see you. Um, Talk to me about the, uh, the the senior semi-finals in, in Ulster coming up at the weekend. Obviously, we see St. McCartans from Tyrone against St. Ergnes from Antrim. We had Cathy Carey on last week um, looking ahead to their game against Breda. So that was a, a notable victory for them. Lurgan maybe something of a surprise package from uh, Cavan, but now they find themselves up against Dunamoyne, and that's uh, that's not going to be simple by any stretch of the imagination, who, whoever comes up against Dunamoyne. But what way are you seeing it? I mean, you've got maybe St. Ergnitz and Lurgan, two teams maybe that, that are looking to make that extra step against St. Max and Dunamoyne, who have been around the block in, in recent times now. Yeah, I suppose it's the young guard against the old guard and, and experienced teams at this time of the year. St. McCartans and Dunamoyne are well used to playing Ulster club football. At this time of the year but it's great to see other teams getting involved and, and as well with the likes of the antrim after winning the all ireland and there's 10 of that uh, money glass team that's actually on um what do you call it on the panel you know so it, it's great to see it and as well with the with the lurgan side so I suppose st st Ergnitz and um lurgan will be young fast running teams Um, you're looking at sitting cartons and don't mind a more experienced um, teams that's that's going to grind it out if you know what I'm saying have have been there before have done it knows what it's like to win an Ulster semi final so it's two cracking games and I'm really looking forward to both of them. Yeah, I mean Breda took down a mind to a replay in in the Ulster final last year, so I guess any of the teams in the last four will feel you know we're in with a right shout here. Yeah, yeah, it definitely, it definitely. Uh, so I suppose down a mind's a team you could say that is really really experienced that they won 20 titles in a row in Monon and they're going on to win another Ulster championship but yeah Lurgan is going to be in their in their way this year and I suppose you have to look at as well they, they have two key players over the last number of years that they are missing now I suppose with Amanda Casey been out injured from the county final and you've seen Louise Curley as well she's transferred over uh, to John Mitchell's in London but again the younger girls have stepped up to play because people always said that Dunamine are an age team but you have the young Garland twins coming through. Brilliant players, yeah. These girls have experienced at county level, at minor and senior level. And then you look at the Lurgan side as well. Do you have some really key players there as well? That like you, you have to remember that I suppose it's all about recovery as well. But there's three or four of them Lurgan girls played um, a basketball tournament on Saturday evening in uh, Tala, which they were successful. And they went on and they traveled up to Terman, which is not close, which is about three hours with them. 
on a Sunday to play a real intense, tough championship opener for them as well. So it's all about recovery for these players and getting them ready for the next ta- task at hand. Yeah, and I suppose, Aoife, the same applies to your, to your good selves in terms of getting recovered quickly and now back up to match pitch for, for a Leinster final coming down the tracks. I suppose, look, you don't need any reminding that it's Kilmacud Croaks on who he'll be facing uh, uh, quite soon. Um, have you seen much of them? How do you prepare for them? Has the video analysis started? Um, yeah, we're not, like, our management are definitely looking at them all right. Um, we played them early in the year in a practice match. Um, we know we know what we're expecting, you know. Um, the only thing we can do is bring out our best players forward and give it a go. We're looking forward to the challenge. Yeah, it should be a momentous day. Um, and Jerry, I suppose in light of that, as a management team, again, how conscious are you of um, the strengths and weaknesses, perhaps, of the opposition, uh, balanced against making sure that your own players are, are are confident and settled to play their own style without getting too bogged down in what the opposition are doing? Is there a, a pretty fine balance to be struck in all of that? Uh, not really. I suppose the big thing for us is focus on ourselves first of all. Obviously, you're you're reading reports of the opposition when you're leading up to games, and you know, I suppose seeing the scoring threats and seeing how much they're conceding but like we basically focus on ourselves as much as we can and and get the best out of ourselves um jerry i suppose borish are would there be something of an unknown quantity to to maybe a lot of people obviously they've got some inter-county players in in their ranks but you know we're more familiar i suppose with carnicon and mayo in more recent times but borish have come through now so how much homework can you get done on them in in in, in a relatively short period of time yeah, there's not a lot, I suppose. Uh, like you had new champions last year, me oh, and not more, and then not right. more again in the final this year against them. And like I suppose the, the scoreline says it all. In that county final, it's, it was a very tight affair, um, like a, a one point game. And I suppose Burr Rule came out on top in the semi final with a, with a you know with the minimum margin again against Westport. So like they've had two really good games under their belt. To, to come through and look at I suppose they're looking forward as much as we are but I suppose we have momentum now after last weekend as well which is great yes you know you, you, you like to be playing as much as you can without too much of a delay so look at we're looking forward to the challenge on Monday good stuff and, and Niall do you t- do you take much heed to what's going on elsewhere across the country I mean there seems to be a real freshness about the overall landscape more Abbey losing out in Munster Bally Mack in, 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 into the final there and Crokes and uh, and Tina Healy in, in in the Leinster decider, you know there seems to be a, a a little bit maybe of a change in the guard from the teams that would have been obviously Kilkerran and Clonbern are still in there and Connacht and perhaps uh, Jerry and the lads might have something to say about that down the road, but it, it, it's good for the game, isn't it? New faces, new teams coming through and and, and challenging. Of course, you know it's great for ladies football in general, like you know. Like you know, the registrations has went up in leaps and bounds over the last number of years, and the development that's been done at underage level through the coaching with clubs and so forth, and teams are getting stronger and stronger. You know, in regards to what, yeah, we're always keeping an eye on what the other provinces is doing because Ulster always will see themselves as the kingpins when it comes to you know success when it comes to that. So we're always keeping an eye on and the other provinces to see what 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 they're at as well. Um, there's other games obviously in 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 Ulster coming up. Um, um, at the weekend, uh, Niall, if I just scroll down, we have intermediate semi-finals as well. Uh, Castle Rahan Den from Cavan uh, are playing. The, I have it here against Derry or Donegal. Who came through from that side of the draw, Niall? Yeah, I suppose what, what Jerry alluded to earlier on about the weather conditions last weekend, one of our games was actually called that's off. That's right. So it, that's it, right. Sorry, that's a TBC. That's a TBC. Yeah, yeah exactly. But what... So it's rescheduled. So for this Sunday, so the winners, the winners of Steelstown and Ballyshannon will be playing Castle Rahan next Wednesday on their legs in the okay. Ulster semi-final. You know, so on the other okay. side of the draw is uh, Derry Gunley uh, versus Maritime. Maritime, yeah. And in fairness to Maritime, and you're you're on a bit work being done at Andre Edge levels. Like they were a junior B team a couple of years ago. They came in and won the Ulster Junior Champion, or sorry, they won the title in Throne as junior champions. But on this year, and won the intermediate championship. So there's great work being done as well at Andre Edge level. So it, it kind of helps county teams, you know, in general. And it's great, as you say, it's great to see 
uh, different clubs and different counties coming to the fore. Because like, if you even look at the senior uh, semi finals this weekend, if you look at, I suppose, Lurgan from Cavan and you look at Antrim, you know, Money, Money Glass, like, you know, they're actually coming to the actual top of the underage, you know, within the province. So it's great to see new teams coming up against the older teams, more so like semi Cairns and Dunamine. And then, of course, whenever I see the, the, the word Derry Gonley, I think Emer Smith straight away. What a footballer. It's unbelievable. I think her performance last week, I wasn't at the game, was second to none. Like, you know, she's, it's just a pleasure to go and pay in the money to watch a player like that. And we have some brilliant players across across the country, you know, which is so talented. Like, even last weekend, Geraldine McLaughlin was up against the pillar of a collar. Nurgan did come out the other side of it, but they said the performance that she put in last weekend was second to none as well. Yeah, phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. Then in the junior, um, now they're looking at Clano from Tyrone against Derry News from Armagh and Castle Blaney uh, from Monaghan against Saul from Down. So interesting, in, a couple of interesting ties there as well. Yeah, of course. Yeah, that if you if you look at I suppose Clano has got home advance. If you look within the Ulster Championship, we, we've given it in regards to the teams that are drawn out that's got home advantage. So it's a great boost them because even I was listening to the radio there yesterday and it was the Lurgan captain was saying it's great to have their home game. This weekend, you know, against uh, Dunamine rather more so than the men play all their, their club football in the county ground. So it's great to have these Ulster Club Championships with the atmosphere and so forth. But yeah, Castle Blaney and Saul will be a tough game as well on Saturday. So both of them junior games are on on Saturday. And then we have the we, we have the double header the following weekend in um, O'Neill's Park, in uh, Healy Park, sorry, in Oma, which is the double header of the junior and intermediate on, on Sunday, the 6th of November. Brilliant stuff. Um, now, Aoife, just back to yourself, final question. Uh, you talk about you know, the local community rallying behind this team. Um, some of the most memorable fixtures I've been at over the last number of years are club games and that, that, you know, that tight atmosphere and that, that really, really good atmosphere. How important is the, the 16th player, we'll put it that way, in, in, when, you're, when you're in the heat of battle, particularly in a situation like you were in last weekend when you're seven points down at half time to go back out there and get on a run and get some momentum and hear the crowd behind you? Behind you. How important is that for a player? Yeah, like I think with Tinahili, we're like fortunate to have like a really, really strong panel of about 25 players we had like we nearly depend on our bench to come on and make a difference and they did you know it wasn't just as I said Lucy like there was other girls coming on there and they made a difference for us on the day so fortunately that's why we are such a good team it's because we have a big panel there's no like individuals on the team so it's um definitely a team team effort and if do you find do you feel any extra responsibility as captain, or is it something you just take in your stride? I'm sure you've plenty of leaders within that panel. Yeah, no, it's just something I take in my stride. I think everyone on the team is a leader in themselves, really. Nice to lift silverware at the same time. Yeah. Good stuff. <laughs> good, that. That. <laughs> good, good, Jerry. So looking ahead to what lies in store, quietly confident, optimistic. What's the what's the mood in the camp? I don't know. Well, I suppose you have to be confident, Jackie, because if you don't have a small bit of confidence, you're going to be going nowhere. But uh, look, out, we're under no illusion the challenge that is ahead of us. But we'll go out and give it our best shots again Sunday and see see where it takes us. Um, and just on it, like, uh, you have to give uh, the, the Connacht uh, PRO a big shout out there, Keith. You know, Keep the right. I wasn't forgetting him. They're promoting the games really well in Connacht. Like there was a live stream last weekend. There's another live stream of both games this weekend. So you know it's a, it's a big help to the to the ladies' game. Absolutely, we have the links on our website. If you go to the section, um, just go to our homepage and look for the story that says "Here's your list of upcoming provincial club championship fixtures." You'll get the the live stream links there as well. Um, so there's plenty happening right across the board as uh, intermediate semi-finals in Connacht as well um, at the weekend and also some junior games happening right across the board as well. So plenty to look forward to. For now, guys, I wish uh, Aoife uh, will be uh, looking out for you in a couple of weeks' time uh, against yeah. Kilmacock Croaks in the Leinster final. We might have somebody on next week. You'd never know to, to look ahead to that one. Jerry, all the very best. It's on the, on the Monday you guys are out. Um, the two semi-finals yeah. are next Monday, so something to look forward to um, over the Halloween break. And Niall, as always, thanks uh, for your time. Thanks for coming on, folks. I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you.